2023 Ironman Pennsylvania Happy Valley 70.3. This is a brand new event this year. This is our athlete guide. It is up and I've been waiting to dive into this one for a while now. So page four, we dive into the event schedule of the weekend. Friday, we have our athlete check in two to seven Ironman villages available at that time as well. Um, <clears throat> information tent is there athlete briefings are at three and five saturday we have check-in all world athlete priority check-in closes at noon everybody else is nine to four p.m um, ironman stores open nine to four awesome mandatory bike check-in and timing chip pickup is from nine to five optional gear bag check-in is also at that time as well uh, mandatory run gear bag check-in there is no access to t2 on race morning is from nine to five if i were you i would get both of these knocked out on that day bike and run bag checked in ready to rock and roll on race day your run if you need any high extra nutrition or hydration help before the race make sure that is in the bag um, and i would do the bike nutrition on race morning because you're headed there anyways on that Saturday, there's also three athlete briefings from 10, noon, and 2 p.m. Sunday, race day. All right. The <clears throat> transition opens at 4.30 a.m. There's going to be parking and athlete drop-off available, shuttles over there. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. It's going to be a... Uh, a frantic and awesome environment to be in. 5 a.m. Um, transition open and bike gear setup happens then. Race starts happens at 7 a.m. I would arrive at transition a little bit earlier on race morning just to be safe. Um, <clears throat> and then bike and gear checkout is from 2 to 5 p.m. with awards ceremony happening at 4.30 p.m. Athlete check-in steps are located on page 5 of your athlete guide. They tell you where and when it is, what to bring, all that good stuff, what you will get in there, which is your bike frame sticker, helmet stickers, bike stem stickers, five extra gear bag stickers to be labeled. You're also going to get your athlete wristband uh, <clears throat> and everything there. Something to keep in note, if you do have any other stickers on your bike, you will have to get rid of them prior to check in or checking in your bike. Otherwise, they will not let you to proceed. So anyone that has a sticker left over from an important race will be forced to remove it. Pre-race information also on page 7 is things like physical address, personal safety, mandatory bike and gear check-in located on page 7 here. Athletes will not have access to T2 on race morning, which is why they will have you drop off your bike run bags mandatory on uh, the day before you will be able to pick up your timing chip when you exit the bike check-in area at this race so you will not be able to pick it up when you do your athlete check-in it will be available to you after you check in your bike um, <clears throat> race morning procedure body marking on page eight body marking is not needed at this race uh, i feel like they are going to get rid of that uh, in the next year or two this probably won't even exist anymore after that Race day parking and shuttle information on page 8. Aid stations every 15 on the bike and about every mile on the run. This is the general offerings. Some will have unique things like ice at specific locations, uh, but this is generally what you're going to find at each aid station out there. Timing chip, again, you will not be uh, getting your timing chip in your packet. You will get it after your bike check-in. Uh, race day information such as some bike cutoff, run cutoff, all the cutoffs are gone going to be on page 10 optional wetsuit swim information on page 10 as well as we scroll down here our relay is on page 12 post race information like bike checkout and awards are located on page 13 um, and immediately following that on page 15 we have our qualifying information slots for the 70.3 world championships if you do qualify there make sure you do head to the roll down just in case so with that let's dive into specific course details and this is good going to be a doozy by my all my predictions i envision you are going to have a faster swim um and i didn't mention it before so let's back up preceding the race you are going to be able to swim in the designated swim areas so if we do go to the uh the iron man site here let's dive in here if we do have a um informational post here that swimming is permitted in the designated swim areas from Memorial Day through Labor Day. But they also make a note to say that if you do swim out of the designated swimming areas, uh, you will open yourself up to disqualification. So uh, be very, very careful leading up to the race. If you do elect to swim in the, in the water, do not swim outside the designated areas before race day. 
Back to our swim breakdown. This is a time trialed start. This is a triangle swim in a clockwise uh, direction. So these first couple of sighting buoys are going to be packed. They're going to be busy. Even if you are in the front of the pack, then things are going to be hectic fast. Um, faster racers, you are going to experience a washing machine effect, even though it is a time trial start. People who are time trialing um, behind you, if you are the first wave, are going to be uh, jonesing to catch up with you for sure. So with that, you know, if you are um, getting released before a group of faster people behind you, you might want to think about not totally flooring it and having a big group of people work together for this swim. I don't envision a whole lot of people getting away from anyone here that's just way too straight, way too open. Um, <clears throat> the people that do get away at this swim are going to be the, uh, the more advanced swimmers for sure. It's going to be all skill based on a course like this. Pretty straightforward one. At this first turn right here, regardless of that trend or that um, time trial star, it's going to be a bunchy turn. Okay, this is going to be a little more complex of a turn than normal. You're going to have to have your head on a swivel here, and this is one of those times where I will suggest sighting a little bit more leading up to and actually exiting the turn. Something that is going to happen on race days, you are going to have athletes who try to cut the corner so if you arrive in this area on the bottom of the swim course make sure you are sighting um, all two directions one for obviously where you're going but also just taking a quick peek every once in a while to see what's going on next to you just in case you have an athlete that is uh, having uh, a misguided sight line and decide to to shoot that one instead of the last one uh, this is pretty common at events that have this triangle area right here. And again, this is going to be something similar here as well. People might try to cut this corner here or this one here. So after you do pass through this second turn sight buoy or the second turn buoy, um, make sure that you are looking to see what happens just in case. Obviously, you're still sighting that way, but you just want to be aware of anyone that is uh, potentially cutting the course out there. They should be good about that, but you know, just in case one or two people do slip through, especially on this first one here. Now, coming back after we pass this first one, again, it is all just a straight shot on this swim course. It's bam and bam. There's not going to be a whole lot of currents out there. There's not going to be a whole lot of challenges. It is just really you and the water out here. With that being said, you know, um, watch out for other people. I would advise you to be in a bigger group on this course. Believe it or not, if the group is smaller, don't, or excuse me, if the group is bigger and just really, really slow, don't be afraid to break away from that group. Chances are you're going to have three or four followers that are going with you anyways. If you do find yourself in a group, make sure you are not doing the lion's share of the work around the tricky triangle at all, okay? If you are alone, that is uh, probably one of the perfect scenarios on a course like this, but it's going to be trouble or very, very hard to do so to get alone on a course like this. People are going to be littered all over this course. So the best advice I can give you on a course like this is just to swim your pace. And honestly, if you can come out of the water maybe a little bit slower than your target swim goal, that's going to pay uh, a little more dividends in uh, the coming miles, as you will quickly see as we roll down this athlete guide here. So afterwards, you get out, and then it's on to T1. Keep in mind, after you do your bike, you do not come back here. So you will hop out, put your put your stuff in your bike bag, make sure it's there. Otherwise, you will not be able to get it afterwards. And, and then you won't be back here ever again. Okay, so after you do your swim... Swim course rules are on page 20, things like wetsuits, that kind of a deal. And then you have your point-to-point -point bike course, which is really, really unique here. Um, you do have your a little out and back to start things off here. And this is our bike course here. We do have that little out and back section that we talked about very, very briefly up through here. And then the meat and potatoes of the ride begin so this is a a profile of the race course here so as you can see the hill that everyone's talking about is this one for sure we also have a couple of other pointy angry ones mixed in just want to point out that we have about 3500 feet of elevation gain the point at which everyone will explode on this course if they do not respect it is going to be this last section through here miles 43 through 56 
and we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's dive into the very beginning of our journey, these first 10 miles out on the race course. This section through here, or excuse me, 15 miles out on course, this section right through here is going to be very, very tricky indeed. Think back to the tricky triangle. This is very, very important for you to have in your mind for these first 15 miles. Go your pace not someone else's. If you find that the power is coming easy, let it come easy. Okay. Watch out in this section. The main goal here should be to set up your race and allow your legs to kind of come back to life, heart rate to come down, fuel up as best you can. When we dive into the course descriptions and the course um, images, hopefully it will load for me. Here we go. You could see here that we have one aid station right through here. And if we go back to our bike, that is located right through here. That is right before the main festivities start. Okay, Very important for you to not miss that aid station is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, fuel up. Use the time here to be going faster. Use the time here to... Um, to set everything up, we're going to talk about that in a minute, so don't feel like you have to pause it. Uh, your speed here should be some of your highest, most consistent speeds throughout the day. And let's zoom in here so we can get it a little less busy for you. So you can see that this athlete is going to be approaching... Uh, 23 miles an hour, their slowest valley in here is going to be about 16 and a half miles an hour. And this athlete is honestly targeting about 330-ish. Here, some of the numbers are a little bit high, uh, but again, we will talk about that for that reason why. All right, and again, you have 3,500 feet of elevation on this course, so you're not going to be setting any best times out here by any means. It's going to be a challenging day. Now, after we get past this first 15 miles where you haven't totally floored it, you should be going fast, but doing so in control, right? After we have that portion, we have this lengthy bit through here. So remember, think back to 3,500 feet of elevation gain. We only have 2,300 feet here. So, oh my gosh, what's going on? Where's the other elevation? Well, it is a secret spot we haven't talked about yet. All right, but I'm sure you can kind of put the pieces together here. So after we hit those 15 miles here, we're going to highlight up for the next 20 or the next 10 miles here. And this is 740 feet of our elevation gain. Max gradient in this section is 4% with an average of 0.8. If we dial it back just a little bit, you can start to see the picture of what is really happening out here. We have about a degree of elevation that just is continuously on. It's going to simulate just like an indoor trainer ride, and it's going to be awesome. Right, This is going to be the point in time where you do get softened up on this course, and it's only 640 feet of elevation gain during this section, so it's not a massive elevation profile at all. Okay, But think back to that, that comment I just said. This is going to be the point in time where you get softened up on this course. This is going to be where you have a lot of the separations happening out on course. This is going to be where you start to identify, wow, I think I went a little too hard for those first couple of miles, or I'm ready to go. Hopefully you have that feeling because the next aid station doesn't happen until about mile 30, which, if we come back here, is located after this big hill. All right? So you're going to have to go up this big hill before you get to the aid station. So let's, without further ado, hit up this next area out on course. This is an average gradient of 3.5%. If we go to the, the hill proper, it is a 4.4, hill. Elevation gain on this little tiny section of 1.5 miles is 340 feet out there. Uh, and again, you have a max gradient of 7.5% here. Next up. This is our aid station, and this is another area right through here where we are going to have to just be careful of our, of our effort. This is a nine-mile stretch. Uh, I'll highlight it for you so you can see it a little easier right here. This is a nine-mile stretch where, again, it's going to be easy to overdo things. All right, Very, very easy to overdo it during this section, which we are talking about right through here. And again, this is going to be where you need to kind of get your legs back to good. Okay, Because we obviously have this big... This big guy right in here. And again, I mean, this big guy is going to be the thing that everyone's talking about. So let's just talk about it for a, a second or two here. Um, 
and you can start to see the significance of why it is a main talking point. It is about 5.3 average gradient, two and a half miles here. So it is going to take you uh, a good bit of time out through here. Max gradient 7.7 .7 during this section. And again, this is a two and a half mile stretch. So if you are going super slow, this could take you over 10, 15 minutes to complete. And that's not going to be uncommon on race day if you're going at a slower pace. Do not overdo this section. If you want to go a little bit harder, you can, right? But you have to keep it within reason um, because after you do this hill, no one is talking about this section on race day. You have 730 feet of elevation gain over the course of these 14 miles. So don't view this section as I'm just going to go up this hill as fast as I can and then hit this backside through here and just kind of cruise to the to the finish area. That's not going to be the case at all. Okay, it's not going to be the case. This is going to be a tough, tough area. So you can't put all of your eggs in one basket coming up the big hill that everyone wants to. All right, it's going to be very, very difficult not to do that on race day because the ride is not over after you finish. Now, the thing that everybody saw, hopefully it is still there. Time analysis, we are going to... Um, Oh, excuse me. Here we go. So there is a typical, the adjusted goal, what we have through here, is typically what you would race at with other people. And anytime you're doing these time analysis costs and pros, you really want to identify some skinny, long areas right through here. And this is a big, a big one. This is the big hill right through here. And this segment is... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, a almost a 34 second uh, gain, and it's not a very long one. You want a small segment with a lot of time savings, so you can go a little bit harder there, and if you go 10%, or at, what is that? It, excuse me, I'm talking nonsense right now. The adjusted portion is this red line, right? So if you do go uh, the power that you have that I've targeted this person, right, then you would save 34 seconds right through here and it's not a long one it is a short segment this segment right through here this segment is 35 seconds again but we have a segment time of about nine minutes compared to this one which is five six minutes you get a lot more bang from your buck here and so you want to identify or pick these areas that uh, can be very very beneficial and no surprise at all you have a ton if i can zoom in on them you have a ton of these skinny sections that you're going to save 10 seconds at the very end if you're going a little bit harder, right? If you have the ability to do so, but also within your abilities, right? So not putting all of your eggs in one basket over the course of this big hill is, becomes very, very beneficial because that one that I just showed you, that's that's 10 seconds right there, a minute and a half, right? And here we are again, another 9.3 seconds. And then towards the very end, this is a 13, 14 second time saving again. And this all comes in the last the last 14 miles, last 10 miles. This The last couple of examples are in the last five miles that I've showed you. So there's a bunch of different places uh, like this one right through here, if I can get it, another 12, 13 second time saving if you're just going just slightly harder here. And again, the key is slightly harder because when we go back to our power plan, right, there is going to be times where you do have to work hard. So if you have your legs, you are ready to rock and roll, and you haven't totally crushed it leading up to this point in time, you're going to be in a much, much, much better place. So how I'm telling everyone to kind of ride this course is for these first 15 miles, do so at your pace and be ready to work for the rest of the ride after these 15 miles. Because from here on out, 3,500 feet of elevation gain, we have only or almost all of that here. We have 500 in these first 15 miles, uh, but you know, you're going to be adrenaline out anyways. You're going to be ready to go. So those 500, I'm not really worried about. What I am worried about on a course like this for these last 14 miles are these last 730 feet of elevation gain right through there. So your speed should be high, but you shouldn't have to work too hard for these first 15 miles. After that, another big set, the, the 
the first major area of work is this section through here. And again, you're going to be just cruising up this hill. It's not going to be overly aggressive or hard. If you are one of the front runners, expect your group to start breaking apart during this section. The first real attack is going to happen at 15.2. I guarantee it. Then the next big attack is going to happen around this point in time from mile 21 or even on the descent of this hill 21.3 uh, and then leading up again you're going to have another big attack at 24 and then your last major attack is going to happen at 24 and a half 29 miles on the downhill here after this point in time, everybody's going to be naturally broken up. And the people that do fall off the main packs are going to be the people that have blown up for sure. You're not really going to break away from too many people after this point in time, be, unless the, the group that you're riding with doesn't have the legs. Now, from mile 30 to mile 38, this is a unique section. And again, you just want to be careful at this time here. It's not a recovery section. It's not a just absolutely crush section but think of it as kind of tempo slash endurance um, kind of exploring the upper reaches of your endurance area right here if you did want to go a little bit harder then this should be ridden at your tempo uh, tempo pace but i would save the tempo uh, power targets for later on in this hill because it will start to spike up using this downhill as a recovery just like this one just like this one um, which is going to be something a little unique on this course you're not going to really force the downhills you're going to actually let the downhills come and you're going to recover because after those downhills are over again you got lots of work going going back to the finish line. And again, just keep the pedals working all the way to that finish line, and you're going to arrive at the very end ready to rock and roll. Because uh, on the run course, so this is going to be another super unique uh, kind of offering for Ironman this year. This is all through the... The, the Penn State campus, Happy Valley campus. This is a awesome, awesome course, one that I'm really excited for, and I'll show you why here. This is the course laid out in a way that you can actually see it, not uh, the other way. So what you will notice for these first mile right here is it's all downhill, most of it. You're going to have a couple of uphills, but nothing super crazy um, in terms of earth-shattering hills. After you get to the end of this first mile, be ready to rock and roll. You're going to have to get your bearings a little bit faster here because you do have this just sheer downhill effect on this first mile. Uh, you're going to have to be very, very careful, and you should not run this first downhill like a traditional downhill. Just get to the bottom. You know, Don't be afraid to kind of slow down or, dare I say it, even walk on this downhill. Because after this point in time, again, just like the bike, it is ready. Or it is go time after this. You need to be ready. So you will zigzag your way through the campus. Some of this is paved, some of this is not. Some of this is through uh, buildings. You're going to be running under it. There's going to be shade in a various uh, array through buildings or actual trees. Um, it's going to be a fun, fun time through there. And as you zigzag your way through the campus here for the next four and a half miles here, it is relatively uphill. You have my computer will let me highlight here for these four miles here you do have your 200 feet of uh, let's call it 680 feet of elevation gain you do have that uh, to to go for so you do have that afterwards uh, if you dive in and drill down a little bit deeper you have some pretty serious steep hills coming in at five percent um, when they are the steepest, right? And you are going to go down and then back up, and you will see diving up again to 7 8%, and then it's lumpy after that on this out and back section. It is lumpy, right? We're coming back in, and then the hills start proper up again, and <clears throat> it's just going to be a battle for you on the run. So the, the keys to this one, uh, you do this twice, by the way. The keys to this one are to stay hydrated and to listen to your body. On that bike, because you are going to naturally be going a little bit harder for an extended period of time, the calories need to be a top priority. They need to be part of your plan. You need to fuel up a little bit more. You're going to be going slower. You're going to be going a little harder on that bike. So fuel up, uh, but not a ton. Right, You need to have a little bit more for sure, but I'm not talking double the amount. And the run, same way, same thing, okay? You are, you're going to be at forced to fuel up, cool down everything. If it's a hotter race, which I'm envisioning, cooling is going to be a major strategy on this course, and it needs to start ASAP, 
right? Going back to our course profile, which we are doing twice, you have an aid station here and another one here. These two are not optional. If you aren't getting anything, you are pouring stuff all over you. Be obnoxious. Just take it, dump it over you, cool off as best as possible if it is a hot day like I am envisioning, okay? Anytime you have these campus races, sometimes the, the weather or the wind can kind of get blocked out, and so you're left with that raw weather out there. If it's humid, again, I'm envisioning a humid, hot day. Um, it's going to be kind of musty, muggy. It's going to be rough back through here, okay? Cool yourself off. Get as cool as possible. Don't be afraid to take an extra 5, 10 seconds during these aid stations because as you get deeper and deeper into this race, you are going to be experiencing more and more of these hills. And you're going to be doing them twice, right? And the people that fail to do that on the first loop are going to be the people that pay for it on the second loop for sure. Because of the nature of this course, the up, the down, everything, it is going to be very, very difficult to manage your running mechanics. That is going to be something that's going to have to be going through your head. Have a set list that is going through your head. When you're not talking about your run dynamics, you're going to be talking about your hydration and nutrition. And repeat, 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 repeat. How is my foot strike? Where's my body? Do I have an engaged core? How are my glutes when I'm running? All of that good stuff. Am I just engaging my quads? What's going on? Um, <clears throat> And you're going to be distracted by a whole host of things, so it's going to be very easy to pass the time. After you do that, say, when was the last time I ate, drank, how's my nutrition with electrolytes, what's going on with my calories? And then after you identify what you need to do, go back to your mechanics, and you should be back at that next aid station. And then you just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Uh, it's going to be very easy for you to overdo your effort levels on this uphill. So power is going to be a big major player in the uh, upper echelons of performances on a course like this. Take the downhills as they are downhills. Use them as a as an opportunity to let gravity do the work for you, except for some of these instances uh, when, you know, it it's totally bombs down at negative 6%. There's not really a whole lot you can do there. You just have to kind of manage it, right? And there's going to be a bunch of places where that happens, negative 5, negative 6. All of that becomes just uh, a battle of management. But at a couple of places here where it's negative 1, 1 1.5%, you should be able to let gravity just kind of throw you down the road. Okay, and that is the keys to the course with the run. It is going to be a, a super fun day out there. And again, one, two, three, and then we can hopefully hit it back four, five, six, seven, eight aid stations out on the run. Uh, a notable thing to take note of is that first aid station on the run doesn't happen until after that first mile. So when you leave transition, make sure you are ready in terms of nutrition and hydration. If they have an aid station in there, don't skip it because you're going to need that aid but probably before that first mile. If you have anything left in your bike bottles, make sure you're drinking that or taking it in before you go. And in a perfect situation, right, you will have already done that in these last couple of miles here. Here, which you will have to climb back up and do that transition. So probably mile 54.9.8, that's going to be the last point in time where you can really take advantage of that terrain leading in to the transition area. So uh, that is the, the race kind of in a nutshell. That is uh, the kind of the keys to the course for you out there on race day. Bike course rules are on page 27 and 28. The run course in your athlete guide is going to be located on page 33 and Again, you can see this a little clearer with that image that they have here. It's it's a lumpy course. It is a fun course. Gain of about 600 feet they are listing. Uh, so it is it matches up pretty well. Run course rules are located on page 35. If you have any other keys, or not keys, if you have any other questions or want to talk about individual race strategies, please let me know. Reach out individually. I'd be happy to go through it with you. Good luck, everybody.